Let's talk about checklists. Aviation is incredibly safe, amazingly safe by any measure, but it's not inherently so. It's only that way because a lot of people work hard every day to make it safe. You need to be one of those people. Checklist usage is one of the ways we help break the chain of errors that lead to almost every aviation accident. The airlines represent the best example of aviation safety. In the period of 2010 to 2020, they have had an accident rate of less than 0.15 accidents per 100,000 flight hours, while general aviation averaged six accidents per 100,000 flight hours. That's a 40-fold difference. Besides good equipment, training, and standardized procedures, discipline checklist usage also stands out as a manner in which airline operations avoid critical items being missed. The FAA's practical test standards for gliders require each applicant to utilize, follow, or complete the prescribed appropriate checklist in these areas. The checklist may be performed while accomplishing its elements, often referred to as a do list, or as a review after the elements have been accomplished. You might have a checklist placarded in your glider, on a separate card, or memorized. My own glider's ClearNav has an electronic checklist function not too different from an electronic checklist found in the latest Airbus and Boeing aircraft. All are acceptable, but a checklist is not going to help unless you use it. Human nature often leads us to complacency when completing repetitive tasks, and checklists are no exception. A common trap is just reading the usual answer without actually checking or considering the item. Gear, flaps, airspeed, trim, traffic, spoilers, Safety requires checklist discipline to stop and consider each item. Gear down, flap set, wind direction on a northwest. Winds are calm, airspeed, airspeed to fly 50 miles an hour. Many airlines employ a technique of the pilot answering the checklist of intentionally pointing at the item on the checklist as it's read. Here in the glider world, we're doing them by ourselves often with no one looking over our shoulder to catch errors. We also have the luxury of writing our own checklist to suit our own situation. Your instructor may have given you several checklists to follow to cover the basics, and when you find your situation has increased in complexity, you might want to add additional items like oxygen, transponder setting, flight recorder, turning the camera on, or making sure your lunch isn't left in the car. Here on my own checklist, I've not only added some of those items, but also reminders of key airspeeds. I'd like to offer some tips on checklist construction and use. First, you're not writing out instructions. We need to make the checklist usable, not a burden. Eliminate extra words. Pedo cover is easier to read than remove and stow the pedo cover, and it can be printed in larger font on the limited space. Ensure the things that make a difference are on it. Making sure the landing gear is down before landing is definitely worth checking. Have the order of the items make sense. It might be inside to outside, like controls, canopy, cable, or have the answer from one item lead to the proper setting for another, such as considering the wind before determining the approach speed, and then setting the trim for that speed, or considering the direction of wind before briefing an emergency rope break plan. For checklists to be done from memory, use a mnemonic, like FUSTAL, GF Watts, or AB Triple C Double D E and make them convenient. An index size card that fits in your pocket is easier to deal with than an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Post it in the cockpit, the trailer, or wherever it will be used. Yes, real pilots do use checklists. It's how we get to be old pilots.